Welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Wednesday, the 28th day of year. Let's begin with Tzedakah, Gedela Tzedakah, Shemekarev Asasagaula Tzedakah, Charity brings Mashiach closer. And today we're starting chapter 52. The Alter Rebbe continues with the explanation of what he started last chapter, asking the question, how does... How is it possible that God is revealed in one place more than in another place? Isn't God everywhere? And yet we say in the Holy of Holies, for example, the temple, God's presence is there in a greater level. And the same question can be asked about holy people, about auspicious times, certain times, certain days are holy. So, the Alter Rebbe started explaining last chapter using the analogy of a human body, the relationship between the body and the soul. So a human, per, a human being sees, I can see, I can eat, Baruch Hashem, I can walk, I can talk, I can write. Where does this energy come from? It comes from the soul. It comes from the soul, all types of life that we have, all type, types of functions that the body is able to do, that the person is able to do. It comes from the soul. However, the soul itself is indivisible. Meaning, the soul is beyond um, the, the, the different levels and different aspects of the functions of the body. On the one end, the soul is equally in every part of the body. The brain is just as alive as the toenail. And so it's everywhere. The soul is everywhere. And yet, the soul is nowhere revealed. In other words, the very essence of the soul, what the soul is capable of, is not revealed in any way, in any aspect of the, of the person's body. So how does it come from such a powerful, essential soul? How does it get from that point to go to, the, to animate and, and, and give life to each individual organ, the different types of energy that the different organs require? For this, the Alter Rebbe explains that there is a middle stage, and that is the brain. There is the types the, and the general life, and potential, and the potential to all types of functions of the person. It all comes into the brain. The brain is the nerve center of the entire body, and from the brain, it gives. The energy that comes from the brain, it immerses from the brain to each individual organ. So the brain is like the, the middle point that connects between the soul and the body. So, therefore, whatever happens in the brain, first of all, the brain receives everything first. And from the brain, it works, uh, it animates the entire body. And whatever happens to the body that is felt in the brain. And all the functions, all everything what happens in the brain affects the body, affects all the parts of the body. And that's why it's so important when you're dealing with the brain. When you're dealing with the brain, if you have a surgeon, if someone needs surgery, there's obviously a big difference when you have surgery on the toenail or you have surgery and the brain. Every tiny little movement can affect many things in the body. So the same thing the Alter Rebbe goes now to say that when we're talking about the godliness, the godly energy that comes down from Hashem, it comes first into the brain of the world. And he's going to explain there is the source of the energy of this world that animates and gives life to all of the you know, all of creation all types of creatures 
So let's see inside what Al Tarebe explains. Chapter 52. Okay, Shenit Benishma Sa Adam. Ike Gilui Klolus Achai Subamaychin. And just as in the human soul, the principal manifestation of the undiffused vitality is in the brain. While all the organs receive merely a light and potency which radiates to them from the source of the manifestation of the said vitality in the brain. So in the brain, there is the beginning of the revelation of the what he calls the general, the undiffused vitality, meaning this energy that has in potential to all types of functions of the body, that's revealed, begins to be revealed in the brain. And from there, from the brain, there is merely a, 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 a radiates from the brain, a, a light, a potency from the brain to the other organs. It's not that the entire brain is given to the organs, only a small level, very small level of the light that comes from the brain. So indeed, figurative, figuratively speaking, so, so indeed, this is figurative speaking, is the essential manifestation of the general stream of vitality animating the worlds and the creatures therein, clothed and contained in his blessed will, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge which are called the intelligence. So God's will, which represents the Kesa, the crown, and the Chachma Binadas, this is what is called the Meichin, the spiritual brain. That is the spiritual brain of the world. And from there, all types of vitalities come into this, to all creatures of the world. Now where is this Chachma bin the God's intelligence, where is this clothed in? It's clothed in the Torah and the mitzvahs. And these, the will, the Chachma, Bina, and Das, are clothed in the Torah and its mitzvahs. Because the Torah and mitzvahs are God's will and God's wisdom, as we explained many times. This is their abode. The Torah law and the mitzvahs are themselves the will of God, desiring, as he does, that the law in a particular case should be specifically one way and not the other, and that a particular mitzvah be performed in a certain manner and not otherwise. Understanding the laws and knowing their reasons for the mitzvahs, this belongs to the divine levels of Chachma and Bina, the wisdom and understanding. Thus, within the Torah and the mitzvahs is enclosed the intelligence of above, and in it is it is to be found the undiffused stream of vitality that descends into the worlds. This is why they always say, "What is the Torah is like the blueprint of the world. The Torah is the source of life to the world. Everything what happens in the world is in the Torah. And that's why so many times when the Rebbe would give blessings to people, the Rebbe would tie it to doing something, a mitzvah. Connecting with a mitzvah. What does the mitzvah has to do with if somebody's asking a blessing to get to be healthy? 
It's not because it's a give and take. You do something for God, God will do something for you. It's much deeper than that. It's much, much deeper. It is because this, the Torah is the source of life. So, so changing things in the Torah in a positive way is, is like, like you're doing a brain surgery and doing the right thing and moving whatever you need to, to place. It should flow in the right direction. All of the energies from the Torah comes into the into this physical world. Continues the Alter Rebbe. The Gilui Klolus Amshach Azud, the manifestation of this general flow of life, which is similar to the undiffused stream of vitality found in the brain, takes place, as the Alter Rebbe will soon say, when the flow from the intelligence descend into the Sephira of Malchus. He's going to say that this is the place where it first begins, in Malchus of Atzillus, that is where it begins to be revealed. So this manifestation is the source of the vitality which the worlds receive, each one in particular receiving. But a diffused glow that shines forth from this source. So this refers not to the general stream of vitality found in the intelligence, but to its revelation. This revelation is the source of the vitality received by all worlds and their creatures, each according to its particular level. So the diffuse glow that shines forth is, is going to explain is it similar like the sunlight comes from the sun or like the energy like the different faculties of the organ of the body that they come from the brain so just like the sunlight the sun shines on different things equally and it's just a small glimmer of the sun that comes into, that animates, and then it shines in, in, in different parts and different things and different objects. In a similar manner to the light that radiates from the sun by way of an example, where the rays are but a diffused glimmer of the sun's essence. Or another example is whereas the faculties of the organs of the body derive from the brain as discussed above in the previous chapter. So the same thing, this is the place, this is the where the light of this godly energy comes to be revealed. Now this place the Alter Rebbe is going to say, he, he gives it, uh, it's, he mentions what the Zohar refers to this place, the source of life of this world. He refers to it with four different terms. The four is going to be the Alma de Isgalia, the revealed world, and Matronisa, the queen, Ima Tata, the lower mother, and Shekhinah, the divine presence, the dwelling of, a she- of divine presence. And he's going to explain um, why is, this is referred to, this source of life, why this is referred to with these four terms. Continues al Rebbe. Mokr Zeh Huanikro Alma De Izgalia. Now, the, in, in this, it is this source, the source being a revelation from the general stream of vitality found within the intelligent, which is called in the Kabbalah the world of manifestation. So why? Why is it called Alma de Isgalia, the world of manifestation, the world of revelation? 
because, as the Alter Rebbe Wilson say, it is there that godliness first becomes manifest in the world, in the world. That is why this source, which later on is going to say, this is the Malchus of Atzilus, this is called the source, the Alma de Isgalia, the world of manifestation, because again, from there it begins the revelation, the manifestation. It is also called Umatronisa. It is called Matronisa Aramaic for queen. Why? For the queen receives her vitality from Kucha Bericha, Aramaic for the Holy One, blessed be he, the king. In other words, the king, when we're talking about a king, a Jewish king in particular, the Torah tells us that a king is not just a monarch uh, or so, or a dictator or someone people uh, devote themselves to want to follow a king. Is like it says by King Saul, from his shoulder up, he's higher than the rest of the people. A king is on a higher level. He's connected to, the, to a different world, in higher worlds. The queen is like the one that connects the king to the people. She's the one who brings him down and, and, and relates his great um, levels of uh, it's the, the, the greatness of the king is goes through the queen to be able to relate to people, to the people's needs and so on. So that is why also this place, this source of light is called Matronisa, the queen. It is also called Ve'ima Tata, the nether mother. And it's also called in the, in the nether mother, the lower level of mother for Bina, Bina too is known as the mother, Bina is the understanding. As the verse says, allude to Bina as the mother. Bina, however, is the higher level of mother, while the Malchus is the nether mother. So what is the Bina? Bina is the understanding. We explained in, earlier in the Tanya that Chachman and Bina is like the father and the mother. It's the parts of the intellect. Chachma is the wisdom, the spark of understanding. The Bina is the, the development of the, of the idea. And, uh, and these parts of the intellect, they create emotions. They're the source of the emotions. That is why Bina is called the mother. It creates emotions. But Malchus is called the lower mother because Malchus reveals the actual actions. Shechina, and it is also called the fourth name, it's called Shechina, the divine presence, the dwelling. Why? And it's called Shechina from the scriptural phrase, and I will dwell among them. Or its Hebrew root means to dwell and to be, and be revealed. Al Shem Shemokir Zeh, Ureishis is Galos, Oyerin Saf. So the above mentioned source is called the world of manifestation. For this source is the beginning of the revelation of the light of Ein Sof. And since the source itself constitutes a revelation, it is itself known as the world of manifestation. Because of its own nature, and not because it, it vitalizes the, uh, the revealed worlds. It is called queen because it is this level which extends to the to and illuminates the world, the world in a revealed manner, similar to a queen. For through her the wishes of the king are revealed. And from this source, there extends to each individual thing, world or creature, the particular light and vitality suitable for it, for which reason it is called the nether mother, or it, or it is the mother and source of the particular form of vitality of each and every creature. 
Meshoichen and Mislavish Meshoichem Lachin Yaisam, and it, this light, dwells and is clothed in them in the worlds and the respective creatures, thereby animating them, and that is why it's called Shechina, the dwelling. Now, until now, the Alter Rebbe explained that what is the source of the worlds. Now, the Alter Rebbe goes on to explain that this is not only the source of the world, it is also the source of the Jewish souls. And again, he says the other things besides the four terms we mentioned before, what this level is called, it is also termed in the Zohar, Therefore, it is figuratively called the mother of the children. Meaning of the Jewish souls, the Jewish soul that says in the Torah, it says, Banim Atem Lashem Alekechem, you are the sons of Hashem, your God. Alderech Marshal. Uknesses Israel, it is also called the Knesses Israel, the community of Israel. Why? Shemimokir ze, Netzlu Neshoma is the Hatzilus, Venivu Neshoma is the Brive Chulun. For from this source, the souls of Hatzilus have emanated. These being emanations and not creations, the souls of Atzilus, we explains there are souls that come from a very high world, <coughs> the world of Atzilus, which is only godliness is revealed there. And those souls are not created. Those souls are merely emanated from the ends of light. And this is the source of it. And it is also the source when Nivu Neshom is the Bri, and the souls of Berea have been created, and so forth. All of them, all the world's creatures and souls being derived only from the extension of the vitality and light, which extends and streams forth from this source, which is called Shechina, in a manner resembling the radiance of light from the sun. This radiance being but a ray from its source. So this is the end of today's share gives us a little bit, a little insight of what's going on. Where do we come from? What is the source of our vitality? And we know the secret. What is the brain of the world? Is the Torah. Living a life, a life of Torah is not just something which is, we just, you know, you want to do what Hashem says, which is, of course, the main reason. But we understand now that this is also really the source of all good things. And that is why the Rebbe many times mentioned, when people asked him blessings, as I mentioned before, the Rebbe always said the Torah, living a life of Torah, can no way be in contradiction to what is good for you. People say, okay, I'm, if I'm not going to work on Shabbos, I'm not going to be able to make money. No, that's impossible. If you commit, if you can commit yourself to do the right thing, what Hashem wants, yes, you may seem to be losing here and there, but you know, this is the source of your energy, your life, and ultimately doing this is going to be good for you. It was once... Uh, one of uh, Rabbi Krinsky, the Zangizant, he once said, um, in the earlier years, they came to the Rebbe asking a brach of a someone that he knew that he was not well. And the Rebbe gave him the bracha, told him you should be well. And the Rebbe told him that if you want, that it should come. If he wants, it should come in a natural way then you should also start learning Hasidus. So, what does that mean? You would think, I said, if you, if you want to be a natural way, then go to a doctor and follow the doctor's instructions and take this medicine, whatever. Yes, of course, the Rebbe always tells us to follow the doctors and, get, and speak to doctors, talk to doctors who are friends, and so on and so forth. But what is the real natural way, the Rebbe explains? Learning Hasidus, learning Torah. That is what is really the real connection because the Torah is the brain of this world. 
And when you connect yourself to Hashem through learning Torah, through doing mitzvahs, that is the natural way to be connected with Hashem. So, Bezat Hashem, this is the end of today. We'll continue tomorrow. Bezat Hashem, have a wonderful day.